All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to our presentation on Windows Tactical Endpoint Monitoring. Uh, quick introduction. Who are we? Uh, I'm, I'm John Tidwell. I work for the county of Salt Lake. I'm an IT security engineer, engineer there. I've been there about four years. Um, some of my responsibilities include red teaming, uh, vulnerability scanning, uh, threat hunting, uh, sim management, uh, and a lot of endpoint security. I have a coworker, Chris, who's going to be presenting the ha second half, and I'll let him introduce himself uh, when, he, when he gets up. So I'm going to start off by talking about endpoints, monitoring, why it's important, what insight can be gained from monitoring the endpoints. I'm going to talk about a specific tool called Sysmon from Sysinternals that can help uh, generate logs around that activity. And then I'll turn it over to Chris, and Chris is going to talk about Elastic Stack and how we're using Elastic Stack to gather all this, uh, all these logs that Sysmon's generating and bring it into a central source so we can uh, utilize those logs from a central platform. So we had a problem at uh, Salt Lake County. Back in 2016, we brought in a pen testing company to do an internal pen test. And we learned very quickly that we had a visibility problem. Once the adversary, or the pen tester in this case, got onto our systems and started the post-exploitation phase of, of, his, of his attack cycle, um, we missed a lot of his activity. There was a lot of credential theft and reuse, uh, a lot of moving laterally between systems, workstation to workstation, or server to server. The pen tester used a lot of living off the land techniques using you know, WMI or WinRM or PowerShell, uh, and these things were kind of foreign to us and we didn't have a good handle on how to track them and, and be able to detect uh, their use. And then even when we did, in the few cases that we were able to determine there was an indicator of compromise, we had a problem in being able to scale out and look across to all of our systems to see where else that particular uh, activity was taking place on. So we, re learned, we realized very quickly that we needed better logging and better visibility and we needed to be on our endpoints to be able to track that activity uh, and, and track that, uh, that movement of the adversary. So what's in, why do we want to monitor the endpoint? Here's a quick little side-by-side -side comparison of what you can get from monitoring the network versus what you can get from monitoring uh, an endpoint. So monitoring the, the network, you can gain some, a lot of valuable information there. Uh, IP addresses that are involved from the client and the servers, uh, ports that are used, number of bytes that are transferred, duration of connections. Um, in the case of this comparison, it's a remote access Trojan. So if uh, that communication over the network was unencrypted, you perhaps could see the commands that were being issued from system to system. Um, however, that also might be encoded and difficult to look at. But if, we, if, we're on the mon if we're on the endpoint and we're tracking activity there, we can pick up everything that we could have picked up from the network. But in addition to that, we can start looking at the commands regardless of uh, SSL or TLS. Uh, we can start understanding what users are involved with, uh, with a compromise or, or uh, you know, suspicious activity. Uh, we can pick up the privileges of those users. Is that user running with uh, unprivileged rights or are they you know, maybe perhaps a local admin or even a domain privileged account? Uh, and, with the remote access Trojan, we can start looking at files that perhaps were downloaded or moved around. Um, we can start monitoring the various locations for, for persistence, attempting the remote access Trojan attempting to uh, gain persistence on a system, and a lot more, and we'll go into some of those additional details here shortly. Uh, one of the hard things with monitoring endpoints is there's such a large number of devices uh, and it, you know, as you scale up and more and more systems get involved, it becomes more difficult to manage. On the network side, it can be easier in a lot of cases because there's maybe a few choke, choke points and you just have to deploy a few systems at those choke points to be able to monitor activity on the network. However, with the endpoints, you're going to get a lot more data, a lot more insight into what's going on. Um, monitoring the network is, is is awesome and, and it helps, but there's fewer data points and it's also blinded by encryption, whereas on the endpoint it might not be. It's easier perhaps with uh, pur purpose-built uh, security analytics platforms on the network side. Um, it's easier to, to look at those data points 
um, from a few systems, and it can be more difficult on the endpoint side because um, getting logs from you know thousands of systems into a central repository to be able to aggregate and visualize and, and report on that activity is a challenge, and that's something that Chris will talk about uh, here shortly. So endpoint logs uh, exist to tell us a story. There's a, multiple data sources that are available to, uh, to look at with logs on an endpoint, and I'll cover uh, some of those on the next slide. But they're great because it can show us user, user attribution, and they're good for many use cases. You know, threat hunting, uh, incident response, detection of compromised systems, uh, forensics, um, there's a lot of use cases with it. So data sources that we can use to start understanding what's going on on a Windows endpoint. Uh, I think the one that most people are familiar with is probably the built-in logging mechanisms. So those are your system security application channels, um, things that you can see in the event viewer. Um, and those aren't the only ones that are built in, there's, there's quite a few others. But with the security uh, event channel, you can use advanced security audit policies to help um, more granularly, granularly define what you want to pick up. And there's lots of activity you can pick up with the built-in logging mechanisms. Log on, log, on, log off activity. Um, you know, when new accounts are created or, or deleted. Um, policy changes, and if you're monitoring perhaps a domain controller, you can look at policy changes across um, your domain with, with the GPOs that are being implemented. Um, other things that aren't listed here, you can log when shares are being accessed. Uh, you can log when USBs are being plugged into a system. Object access, there's, there's a lot of, lot of things. And one of the good things with the built-in logging mechanisms is there's a lot of best practices around how to do that, maybe with uh, CIS benchmarks or SCM be benchmarks. But the built-in logging capability has a few limitations um, that I'll go into here shortly. And if you wanna up the game a little bit, and get a deeper level of what's going on on your host, on your Windows hosts, you can push out something like Sysmon uh, that can record quite a bit more activity, or you can even do something more custom if you want to design, you know, alerting with your own PowerShell scripts, you can push events into your own, own event channels. So some of the limitations around built-in Windows monitoring is there's some common attack behavior that's you can't really pick up with those, things like credential theft or threat injection. Um, and then there's some limited information around process creates or DLL loads. There are definitely logs that can help track those. But if you wanna look at code signing and whether the, the signing is valid, um, you, it's not as, not as detailed there. And it's also not as detailed on some of the network connection information coming off of a host. Um, so with Sysmon in particular, there's a lot more granular control you can have over what you're logging as well. Uh, so Sysmon, what, what is it? Sysmon is a tool uh, from Windows Sys Internals built by Mark Rusinovich and Tarmus Gurnier. Um, it runs as a Windows system service and it also installs a device driver. It can be used on any current supported version of Windows. Uh, very minimal overhead, a lot of granular control and I'll show an example of that um, here shortly. And it monitors a wide variety of activity happening, happening on a system. Uh, these are just a few um, and we'll go into a deta uh, details on these here shortly, but monitors processes, network connections, file creations, et cetera. Here's an example of what uh, a log looks like from Sysmon. Sysmon, this is a process creation event. Sysmon actually sends all of its logs about activity to its own channel in, uh, in Windows, its own logging channel. So an example with a process create, you can pick out you know, what uh, application started up, what executable started up. Uh, it records all the command line invocation around that process. So in this case, there's not uh, any command line switches, but for other executables, you're, you'd probably get some command line switches uh, it should be helpful to determine what the application is, is attempting to do. You can see the directory uh, that the process was started or where the, where the user was at when the process was started. You can pick out what user performed the activity uh, and the integrity level of the process itself, whether it's running with administrative rights or it's an unprivileged process. It can be great for figuring out uh, how deep the potential compromise is. And then you're also gonna get information like the, the parent that uh, ended up spawning the child process. And that can help out quite a bit with um, determining you know, the chain of events. 
and, uh, and, and help with uh, incident response and forensics. Uh, so granular, granular audit control. Sysmon can be installed uh, in a few ways. Sysmon, with a basic install, there's a list of things that it starts tracking right off the bat without any additional options. And you can throw in a couple command line switches to turn her on or off other event types. But the real power of Sysmon is in the advanced install. With the advanced install, you feed it an uh, XML configuration file. And that XML configuration file defines for each event type what you want to either include or exclude um, from being monitored. Uh, and there's a great starting point uh, from, uh, that's on GitHub uh, with, from Swift on Security. Uh, and it's really good because it has a lot of documentation on why they turned on or off certain, certain uh, types of logging and, and what they're looking for with, the, with those events. Here's an example of, an example of what granular audit control looks like uh, in the XML configuration. So in this case, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a configuration around network connection events. So this is an on match include, so anything that meets the cri any of the criteria below will be um, audited. So there's a section here and you can audit around you know, where the executable, underlying executable that makes the network connection is launched from. So if it's in any of these directories, uh, it's gonna monitor the network connections. Uh, or you can track network connections from specific named executables like PowerShell, um, the net exe, msHTA executable. Uh, and you can even define auditing around maybe the destination port up here, for example, there's 3389, so RDP connections. We'd pick up all those um, network connections in, in logs on the host. Um, detailed tracking, so I'll, I'll walk through a few of the things that can be tracked with Sysmon. So the, one of the real powerful ones are process events, and that includes both process creations and process terminations, so you can see how long a process was running for. Um, and like I mentioned before, you get full command line invocations, parent process information, user attributable. You even get hashes from every process that spawns. So if you want to take that and throw it into virus total to see if it's been seen before, um, you can easily use that to help, help uh, determine whether something is suspicious or malicious. Um, one thing that we do a lot of is defining suspiciousness around the parent process. So for things like maybe SVC hosts or service that exe, if they have a parent process that's not the normal parent process, we have alerts around um, that type of activity. Or with command line invocations with some of the uh, pen, test or pen testing frameworks like uh, Empire, a lot of those commands, um, you know, PowerShell runs, will have an extremely long um, command line invocation, and we use that to help, out, to help pick out um, suspicious activity. Um, other events, there's network events. So this is great because it ties network connections back to the process and user responsible for the activity. And then you can tie that back to whether it was running with um, privileged rights or not. Uh, it also is going to enrich the network events with uh, DNS data. So it's gonna try to do a reverse lookup to find the host uh, that's, that's uh, connected to the IP address that's being seen. Uh, and it's, it's great because it tracks UDP activity, TCP, IPv4, IPv6. And it also does lookups on the, the host, so the source host and destination host. Um, it, it's, uh, it'll pick out that information for you. Uh, threat events. So one of the things that's uh, nice to be able to track with, with Sysmon is when one process tries to inject code into another process. Uh, this can be indicated, an indicator for, for malware. Malware might try to hide itself in a legitimate process. Maybe explore exe or, or svc host.exe. Um, there are some false positives that I think we've seen with this, but with granular audit control, you can you know, filter out some of the common processes that use thread uh, events, like debuggers or, or crash dump uh, applications. Um, you're also picking up raw disk read events with Sysmon. So like in, in uh, PowerSploit, there's the invoke ninja copy that uh, is gonna try to use a raw disk read to gain access to files that are locked uh, normally. 
things like uh, password databases, like the SAM database or the ntds.zit database on a domain controller. You can try to use raw disk reads to gain access to those even when they're locked, and Sysmon can help pick up that activity. Uh, other events that are tracked with Sysmon, so file creations are, are, is, is a nice one. You can use it to monitor uh, auto start locations, startup folders, or the, new, the scheduled tasks directory to see if anything new is created. And you can also monitor uh, common locations for malware. A lot of times malware is initially brought down maybe to a downloads folder, so you can track file creation events around those, um, those directories. Things coming down from the internet are actually tagged with an alternative data stream, so that named file stream crea created event. So you can use alternative data streams and the logs around it to determine a file, if a file was from the internet. Uh, it's usually tagged when it comes down through a browser or through an email client, and that can help with your, your investigations and um, determining and detecting problems. Uh, process access. So a lot of times, uh, adversary might try to steal credentials out of memory from the LSAS process, and the process access event will actually uh, cut a log if a process tries to interact with LSAS and pull you know, data from it. So that's a great event that, uh, that comes, comes there. Uh, monitoring the registry, Sysmon does that as well. So for any key that's created, deleted, set, renamed, you can set tracking around it. Uh, so you can use this to monitor maybe auto start locations in the registry, the run, the run once key. Um, you can also use it to track uh, security modification, so a lot of the security controls are set in the registry, and you can track when those things are, are attempted to be modified. Uh, file time stomping, so file creation modification events, if uh, a process attempts to modify the time, created time on a file, um, we can cut logs around that and look at that type of, uh, of activity. Um, Images and driver loading. So for every process that's spawned or DLL that's loaded, uh, you can, we can get some hashing information around it and also the code signing on those, um, those processes. Uh, and it even validates the, the signing. So you can use that to maybe filter out benign processes based on that information. Uh, I haven't used pipe events too much, but it also records information on inter-process communication events. Um, and it records information on WMI as well. So you can use WMI to establish persistence, and Sysmon can be used to, to track that, uh, that attempt at persistence. Um, so this is all well and good maybe on a singular system, but on an enterprise scale, we need to be able to look at many systems at the same time and track activity between them. So some of the things that you may want to do you know, across the enterprise and tracking uh, its endpoint activity is do we see systems talking to each other that may not talk, need to talk to each other, maybe pass the hash uh, techniques between systems. Um, if logs are deleted or they roll over, we're gonna need you know, the logging information to a central repository in order to do uh, analysis even if the system's offline or the logs are not available for some reason. Um, and with average breach detec detections being such uh, you know, it takes a long time to discover a breach. We need to have logs available for a long period of time. Um, the average breach detection is about 100 plus days. Uh, so we need, we need some, uh, a good duration of, of logs that we have stored up. Uh, and we also need to aggregate and analyze behavior across uh, the entire footprint. Uh, so what can help here is a log management system or a SIM solution. Splunk, QRadar, LogRhythm, ArcSight. In our case, we deployed an elastic stack implementation, and I'm actually gonna turn it over to Chris and let him talk about what we've done there and how elastic stack can be used to monitor endpoints on scale. So just a little bit about myself. I've been with Salt Lake County more than 20 years now. I've been uh, on the security team for about eight years, and most of my life has been blue team stuff. Uh, I'm starting to get into some of the red team stuff, and, and John's kind of helping me in that direction, but 
I'm a, so we make a few assumptions in our, in our presentation. Um, you, we're using elastic stack, uh, as you saw on the previous slide. Um, you know, if you've got a logging system, you can pull Sysmon logs into your system. Uh, you can do a lot of the same things we're doing uh, and not have to go the direction we did. We went this direction because we don't have a lot of money, right? Elastic was free, Sysmon was free. Um, we went through a lot of different endpoint monitoring systems and we just simply couldn't afford the ones we liked. So we went this way mostly because it was the path of least resistance, it was the easiest for us. Um, but you can implement a lot of these things, you know, if you've got your own logging system in place, if you've got Splunk or something like that, it, it would be really pretty easy. Uh, Oop, am I going the wrong way? So I'm assuming people have heard of Elastic Stack, and, and some people may have already have Elastic Stack running in their environment and, and know quite a bit about it. This slide just gives kind of a basic overview of, of the architecture. So on the left side there, you've got the endpoints uh, with syslog and uh, Elastic uses, to collect syslog, we're using what's called WinLog Beats, which is the client side uh, data collection that Elastic Stack uses. So then you get over to the server side components where you've got uh, Logstash. WinLog Beats and Logstash have some similar components and you can decide based on your environment, you know, how that's gonna work for you. We, we tried to do most everything on the endpoint, so, you know, we weren't really sure how it was going to affect our server environment or, you know, what kind of, you know, how much data, how much traffic we were going to be ingesting because we'd never done it before. So, with WinLog Beats, you know, we, we define where it's going to ship its data to. Um, we also tag certain things at that level. So if it's a server we're monitoring, we tag it as a server so that we can search it easier and pull out server events and, and weed them out from workstation and endpoint events. Um, you know, then you've got your, your elastic search where all the data is, is indexed and stored. And you've got finally Kibana, which is where you, know, you can visualize the data and create your dashboards. And you know, dashboards are all the rage lately. Uh, all your C-level folks love to see a good dashboard, and Kibana helps a lot with that. Uh, I talked about WinLog Beats briefly. Let me see if there's anything I wanted to add to that. Um, we have a, you know, WinLog Beat uses a, a YAML file for its configuration, and you know, we have an endpoint, uh, what do you call it, not monitoring, that's what I want to say. It's, so we have endpoint management where we can push those configuration files out periodically to make sure they have the most up-to-date configuration if we happen to change everything or anything. Um, we use the WinLog beat to help load balance. We define the back end, you know, at the client so it knows where to put it. And then Logstash is the server-side log aggregator. Um, so we're talking about just Sysmon here, but in terms of normalizing data, you know, you can collect a lot of different logs with this, and you can go in a lot of different directions, and, and, and we have, but you can help normalize those fields if they're not the same in each kind of logs that you're trying to pull. If the, if the IP address isn't in the same field as uh, from one, system to the other, you might normalize those things in log stash so that you can uh, search that data easily. And then the storage end of it is the elastic search. Um, does all the things that we've got there. <clears throat> it's where you want to keep track of your data retention as well. And then Kibana is where we 
you know, analyze and visualize this. We can pull on, we, you can build queries and, and make dashboards that show you instantly what it sees with those. And I don't know how well you can see this. This is, this is a, a basic Kibana dashboard. Um, you know, the count of Sysmon event counts and then the second one from the, on the top there, second from left shows you the Sysmon event types, right? There's a bunch of different event types. Uh, it can break them down by that. And then, you know, the dashboards you're going to be creating for, for consumption by C-level executives is going to be quite a bit different than what you create for yourself when you're monitoring your systems. We use a lot of tables. You know, we just like to see the raw data, uh, how many, who, those kinds of things. Um, try to give an example, probably the easiest ones to give are the, are the phishing problems we have, right? I don't, I don't know what your users are like, but ours will click on anything and, we, and we've discovered that we have about 10 minutes between the time the email gets in to the time they're clicking on the links. So Sysmon and Elasticstack has really helped us go back. Once we find out that you know, people have received a phishing email, within very little time, less than half an hour, we can figure out who got the email, who clicked the link, and in certain cases we can even go along and we can say, all right, after the person enters credentials into this site, where does that site redirect them? So you can look at something and you can say, okay, person X went to the site, we can see that. Person Y and Z not only went to the site, but I can see that they were redirected to the site after they put in their credentials. So I can with quite a bit of certainty say that, you know, person Y and Z entered their credentials and person X just visited the site. So what that's done for us as far in terms of incident response is we don't have to rely on the end user anymore and their self-report, which was a horrible way to go to begin with. Um, we can see what's going on on their computer. We know more about what they're doing than, and, and oftentimes more than they do. And so it's really cut the time down for us. We can get ahead of these things. Uh, we don't find out about account compromise when someone's used our system to send emails out. We found out about it much quicker and we can do something about it much quicker. Um, again, so this, this jumps to alerting. Uh, we decided on Elastalert mostly for the same reason we decided on uh, Elasticstack. It's because it was free. It was something we could add in and implement pretty easily. <clears throat> you can see some of the rule types there and you can see This helps you get ahead of events, right? Now you're being alerted to things that are happening on your network and you're not having to wait for someone to tell you that they may have clicked on something or they may have seen something weird. You can see a lot of this stuff right up front and I've got some examples of some of the alerts here in a few slides. Um, the other thing we discovered when we implemented this was we were able to tune quite a bit of stuff on our network. There's a lot of things that are going on that nobody has any idea they're happening until someone starts looking at the logs. You know, uh, servers doing certain things, communicating in certain ways, and you just start asking why. And, and we've been able to dramatically tune quite a bit of the noise out of our network with just by monitoring endpoints and servers uh, with Sysmon, you know, We've tailored this so that we just see security alerting, but you know, if you're more interested in, in performance on your network, you can really tailor some of these alerts and some of these uh, dashboards to show your performance and to see why things are, are acting the way they are. It's really been a very useful tool. This is an example of, of one of the uh, email alerts that come to us. So it's really only probably a couple of minutes after the events happen uh, in Elastic and it ingests it that we get an alert. So it's, it turns around pretty quick. 
Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about Elastic is, is once we got this running in, in full production, uh, we found out that the shipping the Sysmon logs and uh, pulling all the logs that we're pulling really had a, a very small footprint. It didn't even show up on our top 10 list of, of things that were traversing our network. So it w was really a nice solution that didn't cause a lot of uh, kind of angst for our network people. So now that we've talked about Elastic Alert or Last Alert, we can uh, start thinking about what kind of things do we want to be alerted on? What kind of things do we want to look for in our environment? And then, you know, we have some use cases here. Uh, detecting credential theft. You know, if we see processes that inject or interact with LSASS.exe, we get alerts on that within minutes. Um, you know, injecting processes, uh, injecting themselves into other processes, um, any use of PowerShell really. I mean, it was very useful for us to get kind of a handle on who used PowerShell in our environment. You know, are, are, are just our system admins using it? Are there people in other divisions within our, within the county that are using it? So that was really useful to get an idea of what kind of behavior we're seeing on our network. Um, oftentimes your, your garden variety ransomware will start with command exe, move to PowerShell, and then do something like use BitLocker against itself. And you can see that progression through here. You'll be able to see when someone invokes command exe, how they get to PowerShell. You can watch the process as it happens. And you can go back and search your entire environment to see where else this may have occurred. Um, probably the biggest gain we've got from that is when something happens and we go to uh, you know, some kind of meeting to, to talk about what's going on, you know, we have answers. We can say, this is where the person came in. This is what they're doing. This is what they're after. It gives us the ability to give answers in these kind of meetings, especially the after action kind of, you know, lessons learned things. Whereas before you may go in and you may only have partial information or maybe you really don't know what happened. This kind of system with, with Sysmon and, and a way to ingest those logs and, and bring them back up, you know, has really upped our game and we can, we can go in with pretty good certainty now and just say, look, this is what we saw. Here's the computers that are affected. Here's the users. This is how they got in our environment. This is where they've moved. Um, it, it's given us a lot of capability that's been really nice. And I'm, I'm kind of moving fast through these. I hope to kind of get through them and get to some points where people, if they have questions or they want us to cover more areas in more depth, then, then we can go back and do that. Um, this is, you know, tracking evil on the endpoint. You know, obviously you can see when they beacon back to C2. You can start to see uh, attacker pivoting behavior. So if any of you sat in on Chris Truncer's WMI workshop, all that stuff where he's living off the land and moving sideways in your environment throws flags and we get alerts. I mean, someone is going to have to be awful stealthy to sneak around on our network. You know, it might not take them much to get in, given the end users or, or what they are, but um, once they're in, we're reasonably certain we can catch their behavior within minutes at best, and, you know, it's not going to take us long. Uh, our biggest problem is, you know, we're, we're a government shop and, and we're not there on the weekends and we're not staffed 24 seven. So the hackers know that and they sneak in at night or on the holiday weekends and that's when we see the most activity. John, do you have anything you wanna add to these? We go into these uh, end case. Do you want to come up and talk to some of these? Because you're the you're the red team guy. All right. 
right, so we have a few slides on red team activity or adversarial activity, a little attack chain, and what can be picked up with uh, Sysmon and analyzed with Elasticstack. So in the attack chain, just a few steps in this mini one here, but uh, client site compromise user opens up uh, malware. That user, uh, the adversary then elevates to system level permissions, does some credential theft, and then moves laterally. So the first of those activities, uh, just to kind of orient you here, so on the left um, in the red box is the adversarial activity and the blue is what we can pick up with, uh, with Elasticstack and what we get alerted on or see visualizations around. So in this example, uh, an HTA file is created by the attacker. Um, not displayed here is you know, hosting the, the malware and having, getting the user to go download it and execute it. But when it is uh, downloaded and executed, a reverse uh, shell is obtained by the attacker. And that's what's happening on the left. On the right, uh, the particular HTA file launched PowerShell. Uh, and the command line invocation of that PowerShell execution was very large. You can see there the command line length was almost 5,000 characters. Uh, we have a particular alert around uh, if more than 1,000 characters are seen in a command line invocation of PowerShell, then alert us to it. And you can see there in the alert, not only does it show us you know, what user was uh, involved in the activity and the host that was involved in the activity, but it also shows us that the process integrity level um, of that PowerShell is high, so it was an administrator that's, or local administrator that happened to launch this, uh, this malware. And it even shows us the parent process and the um, process command line around the activity. Uh, so that's the last alert email we would get. And then in the bottom right is just the Sysmon events um, for network connections uh, reaching back out to the command and control server. So that's, in this case, how the attacker gets his initial access to a machine. When he has that uh, initial access, he, once he realizes that he has local administrative rights, he's likely gonna try to elevate to system. Uh, in Metasploit, simple process to elevate to system. Uh, when he does that, it actually uh, set, uh, logs an event for a new service creation. When that new service is created, uh, we have an alert built around system uh, new service creations, service creation names that have never been seen before in our environment. So Metasploit actually uses a random service name in this case. Um, so because that's brand new to our environment, we get an alert around it. So we know that a new service has been installed on a system and we can work backward from what the uh, service executable is and what the command line evocation is of that new service. And we can try to figure out what occurred on the system. Uh, in this case, elevation to system level permissions. Uh, and then on the bottom right, uh, in Kibana, we have some dashboards built around uh, new, new service installs across our entire environment. So if this similar pivoting technique, or is this similar IOC was seen elsewhere in our environment, we might be able to catch it by looking at a dashboard with giant spikes. So new services being installed on many systems uh, in, in, a, in our enterprise within a short period of time. Um, so that's how we can potentially track and alert on system elevation. Um, once he has, the attacker has system, he's gonna try some credential theft. So in this case, there's a module uh, in Meterpreter to, to run Mimikatz. Uh, running Mimikatz, uh, it will dump uh, hashes, and even if you're on an old, older Windows 7 box, it might dump the plain text credentials from memory. Um, so when the attacker does this, um, it's kind of hard to see there, but on the left is some Kibana uh, uh, dashboards around a particular uh, executable interacting with LSAS. And then on the right, again, with IOCs, we can look across our entire environment to see if this activity is taking place elsewhere. And we can see giant spikes in um, suspicious LSAS um, interactions. So we can pick up credential theft across our, our footprint. And then the last step in this little mini attack chain is maybe lateral movement from one system to another. So once the adversary has some of those credentials, uh, maybe in this case, uh, up in the top right, they're using a, a module built around WMI to 
uh, execute code on a remote system with the credentials they've stolen. So once they do that on the left, again, we have some alerting built around uh, WMI pivoting, what users involved, what host, um, and the commands issued across that WMI connection. And then in the bottom right, again, uh, a sysmon event built around network connections, so you can see the pivoting there. And then on the left, a dashboard for, um, in this case, WMIC um, executable um, executions in our environment. So if we see giant spikes, it might be an indicator or something to look at. Um, so that's how we were using endpoint monitoring, but going beyond endpoint monitoring and bringing in other data sources to Elasticstack, there's a lot of room for growth um, to help improve detection, hunting, and forensic capability. Uh, you can start bringing in those domain controller logs to see what's going on across the domain, DHCP logs to see what, uh, ho you know, what uh, hosts are connecting to the network. DNS events are great to see if um, a machine reached out to a particular, particular host. Uh, bro data for a lot of different, uh, different use cases, but that's a system for uh, tracking metadata across network connections. You can bring in not, win not just Windows hosts, but Linux hosts data, um, you know, the secure.log uh, and the auth.log files are great for bringing in uh, information around who's connecting uh, over SSH, who's uh, running sudo commands, who's, who's elevating to root. Uh, you can start bringing in those logs into Elastic. You can bring in your web infrastructure, uh, some cl cloud infrastructure. Uh, there's plugins in Logstash both for Azure and for AWS to monitor cloud activity in Elastic. Um, if you have identity management systems, you can start bringing in those logs. Um, but really, the, the possibilities are endless in terms of what you can bring in and start, um, start looking at. Um, here's kind of a reference slide on how you can learn more if you want to do, do something like this in your environment. Where we started was with the, that Cyber War Dog blog, um, great reference on how to deploy your first Elastic Stack, and he has a lot of articles built around threat hunting with Sysmon. Um, Mark Rasinovich, a few years ago at RSA, presented a great presentation around using Sysmon to track adversarial activity. Um, great Sysmon configuration document there from Swift on security to help get you started. And then I've seen a few presentations here at the conference about the MITRE attack framework um, and, you know, those adversarial techniques, tactics and, and procedures and how you, can, how you can track those and what to look for. So that's a great reference to get started, figure out what you want to start alerting on. And that, that's pretty much it. Are there any questions or comments? So for some of the alerting, for example, like with new service creations, it baselines, you know, last 120 days, what activity have we seen? And if anything deviates from that, we get an alert on it. A lot of other things are uh, more built around things in the MITRE attack framework you know, know what, um, you know what techniques, blacklist techniques maybe should be alerted on. So it's kind of a little bit of both. Um, and Elastic is really good. The Elastic Alert alerting engine is great because they have a um, a whitelisting alert module. So you give it a field and say, hey, anything in this particular field, if it deviates, then alert on it. Um, and you can use that module for for baselining. All right, thanks for coming and we appreciate you listening to us.